What is up, Freediver fans? PJ and Jonathan here, and today we are talking about how to properly use a Hawaiian sling. Been around since about the 50s, if not before. Yeah. Oh, so you're around that time, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hawaiian slings, right? There's a ton of them out there on the market. Everything from composite materials to solid wood dowels to turned wood dowels, uh, port I mean, just literally everything out there on the market. It has been around, like I said, uh, about since the 50s or so, um, where Art Pender really made it popular. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's actually um, like record of this type of device going back all the way to like 1917, yeah. uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, this, so this thing, this device has been around for a long time mm -hmm. and honestly hasn't changed a whole lot, right? Um, I mean, used to be, it was a little piece of bamboo mm -hmm. uh, and like a um, tire rubber was what mm -hmm. Art Pender was known for, was yeah. using as his like uh, king of sling, um, which is really cool. But obviously we don't want to go through a history lesson. Let's just talk about what is uh, in front of us today and how to best use it, how to make sure that you're ready for your Bahamas trip and uh, why would you choose a Hawaiian sling? Mm -hmm. um, so Peach, why in the world do I wanna choose a Hawaiian sling? Well, the reason why I prefer a Hawaiian sling over a pole spear is just sheer comfort. Okay. I find myself more comfortable like holding it, having one small thing like this and then just a single shaft and then pulling it back just like that when you're aiming down at your fish. I just think, like I said, it's more comfortable in my opinion instead of having to load up a pole spear like you would i just i feel kind of awkward doing that okay in a way it may just may just be me maybe kind of weird but i don't know <laughs> you are kind of weird yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so it could be a comfort thing um so for me personally uh i've shot a lot of both right a lot of pole spears and a lot of hawaiian slings um and for some good amount of time for both as well um i used to never use hawaiian slings right um chasing the shaft mm -hmm. after i shoot a fish or after I hit that fish, have to chase the fish then, mm -hmm. was never fun for me. Like I <laughs> did not enjoy that aspect of the hunt uh, as much as I did like the pre-shot, right? Mm -hmm. I like that aspect a lot better. So the pole spear allowed me to hit a fish and hold on to it. Mm -hmm. um, where that completely changed, because now I only shoot slings, is when the Gorilla actually, the Gorilla 1.0 came out. It was a metal old school thing, um, but it had the ability to attach a reel to it. Um, so now I can shoot my fish and maintain my fish. Mm -hmm. And for me, Hawaiian slings are just so much fun to shoot, right? <laughs> um, like they have this kind of primitive feel to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's almost like a bow and arrow style to it. Like you're a bow hunter, right? Yes. Um, how do you think that relates or not at all? Uh, definitely relates as far as like the motion of having, well, in my, like what I do is I have my um, dominant hand be the draw hand and um, my undominant hand be what's holding the actual mm -hmm. piece. And so on a bow, my left hand is holding the actual bow itself and my right hand is drawing it back. And it's the same thing with the sling right here. I have my left hand holding the actual shooter, right hand holding it back. And it's essentially the same motion. And that goes back to the comfort thing. Yeah. And there's actually a lot of controversy with that, right? Mm -hmm. Of like, which way should you do it? Should mm -hmm. you have your weak hand holding the sling or your dominant hand holding the sling? Mm -hmm. I'm actually exactly the opposite <laughs> of PJ, right? So I use uh, my dominant hand, I'm left-handed, so I use my dominant hand to hold the sling and my non-dominant hand to draw. Um, I don't think it really makes a huge difference mm -hmm. uh, whether you draw with your dominant or non-dominant. Mm -hmm. Where I think it makes a huge difference is your repeatability, mm -hmm. right? So when you pull that guy back, I, the, what I want you to focus on as you're kind of learning to use a sling is where your draw hand gets anchored, mm -hmm. right? Just like on a bow, mm -hmm. you have an anchoring point on mm -hmm. uh, your cheek. Same thing with shooting rifles, right? Mm -hmm. You actually have a cheek weld. So you put your cheek up against the buttstock of the gun. Mm -hmm. Same thing is true here. When I pull this guy back, I'm gonna actually pull that to my cheek. Sometimes guys pull it to their chin, but some sort of contact point. I've seen guys where they come out here and let it rip. I don't think that is as accurate as if you create 
the same thing mm. repeatable over and over again. I'm actually different. I don't pull it up to my cheek. I pull my hand right back here and okay. I have my finger right on kind of Your my jaw, jaw yeah, line, yeah. a little, like, little bit right there. But every single time when my sling, I pull it back right to there. Shoulder, yeah. Whether it's right or left, obviously, if I kind of, if I switch it for some odd reason, In whether a cave my, or something, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, it's not going to be as accurate, but that goes into kind of closing the gap on the fish mm -hmm. and making you a better free diver, essentially, kind of basically making a more high percentage shot. Because if you are a, a foot away, pointing the shaft straight at the fish, if it's a big enough fish, especially. It's kind of hard to miss it. It's, it's kind of hard to miss. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so, so yeah, having that that um, kind of weld point, right? Like that repeatable point over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And try it out. Figure out what your anchor point is and it, what it needs to be. Mm -hmm. The other thing that uh, I like talk a lot about with Hawaiian slings that I think is very important is the instinctual shooting, right? Mm -hmm. So if you've ever shot uh, shotguns, uh, there is no aiming, right? There's mm -hmm. no sight picture nothing like that. Sometimes there is a bead mm -hmm. on the, the end of a shotgun. So you literally point, shoot, pull the trigger, yep. right? That's the same thing here. There is no sight picture. There is no like, you know, lining it up down the shaft or anything like that. Like you've got this big old wooden dowel thing that's in your way of mm -hmm. the shaft, right? Mm -hmm. So you can aim a little bit, but I am in the context, I'm in the thought process that it is instinctual shooting. What that means is, is that you have done it so many times, right? Mm -hmm. You've taken aim and you've fired. You've taken aim and fired. Mm -hmm. So grabbing one, any kind of fish target, styrofoam, whatever, put it in the pool and practice, mm -hmm. right? Sling some steel down the water <laughs> column and, uh, and really get yourself dialed in uh, no matter what kind of sling you have. Yeah, um, what I like to do from time to time is uh, if I haven't shot a sling in a while, um, and I'm going on a pretty big trip where I will be shooting my Hawaiian sling, mostly a Bahamas trip. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I like to jump in the water, like you said, um, with my foam target. And I don't really, re really like to do it in the pool because if I do miss, mom won't be too happy about a <laughs> shaft going into the side Fair of the enough. pool. But uh, I jump in the water, like anywhere really, whether. Mm -hmm. And um, what I actually do, I don't just sit there the same distance um, mm -hmm. away from the target. I actually you swim, move around. yeah, move around try different distances like I sometimes when I start off I sit still at different distances right. and make my shots and then I start kind of swimming up to it swimming at an angle like just basically doing the same exact yeah. thing that I would be doing on a fish real world yeah, yeah real world exactly and the reality is is that your fish target is not going to act the same way as the fish that you're hunting exactly. right? so in making yourself move is mm -hmm. kind of your best option it's mm -hmm. not a good idea to put pj in the water and have him swim with the fish target while i <laughs> yeah while i shoot at the target so um that's a little bit about handling the slings mm -hmm. and how to uh, actually aim with them um there are two major styles of sling mm -hmm. uh you've kind of got your uh, your like pistol grip style. Um, so like that actually have like a handle to them. And then you've got like your old school traditional uh, sling style. Uh, which one do you use, Peach? I actually use uh, uh, this kind of the pistol grip style. Okay. I shoot the Headhunter Gorilla Sling 1.0, like okay. you were saying. Old school, yeah. Oh yeah, the old metal one that sings straight to the bottom every <laughs> single time you let go of it. But um, the main reason why I use it is because it has this sort of handle right here. And what I see a lot of times is people grab it just like a traditional pistol grip. Uh, we'll get into that here in a second. But with what actually happens is that you put, kind of open up your hand like that and put kind of the webbing of mm -hmm. between your thumb and your index finger right in between there. And if you want to take a hard grip with the rest of your fingers, you can, but you don't you really you need, to. need to. Yeah. yeah, you can just kind of, you can see, pull it back just like that. And I like it because it's more natural for me and it kind of transfers all the energy that's coming back from the sling straight into my arm instead of having something like this where your wrist is kind of cocked in a little bit. All that pressure is going straight into your wrist and it kind of hurts for me when I, yeah, I do that. Yeah, for sure. And so, and so there's different ways to do it, as you mentioned, right? Like with the mm -hmm. pistol grip itself, you mm -hmm. can hold it like this. Um, as Pete was mentioning, right, it could tend to bend mm -hmm. up like that. So with our sling, the Cat 5, what I end up doing is I do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. I turn my hand over, 
and now I can grip the sling like this. And that way when I pull back, my thumb is all in a line mm -hmm. and I actually point with my thumb. So I aim mm -hmm. just like that with my thumb pointed at the fish that I want to shoot. And that way, same thing, I can literally let go of this guy uh, and then, uh, you know, send my shaft down range. Exactly. We also have the Sea Archer Hawaiian sling. Um, we do have a video already up on the channel about this sling, but this is more as a, like a bow and arrow kind of sling. Um, so like we were saying, the same draw, they had that same idea, but with the actual sling itself. Yeah. And so you kind of, if you like, whether you want to hold it sideways or up a little bit, you kind of draw it back just like a bow and arrow. And it's very, very, um, like, like I said, close. Yeah. And, and um, what the draw and the, and the idea handling. of how that works. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, you can go check out that other video mm -hmm. if you want some more info on that guy. So switching gears a little bit, talking about the kind of traditional style, uh, like wooden dowel slings. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people make a very common mistake where they grip the sling like this, right? And then try to pull back. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem with this is that you are relying only on your grip strength. Mm -hmm. And that's not gonna be enough all day in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is Put the sling further up in your hand and actually like where this meat of your hand is, you're going to kind of cup around, right? So it's literally biting into uh, the meat of your palm. So when I pull this guy back, right, it's actually digging into my hand. Now, people may ask, well, what happens? Isn't the shaft going to hit your hand? Well, it's just so conveniently that I have a crease right here <laughs> and the shaft runs right through that crease, right? So when I am pulling this back, the shaft stays nice and straight. You also see that I've got my pointer finger pointing at my fish, right? So now I'm able to kind of aim just like I would my little finger guns, right? <laughs> and uh, so it kind of is really cool. I really enjoy uh, going old school like this in the shallow water for me because I don't like chasing my shaft, <laughs> chasing my fish. Uh, but any of these guys are going to be held that exact same way. Mm -hmm. So some of them will have like different grooves on them uh, or like a little stopper for your hands uh, and then this nice wide piece to hold the mm -hmm. bands as well as to hold the palm of your hand. So really, really enjoy them. Do you have any thoughts or opinions on the standard guys? I do. Um, just a little hack that I learned over the years. Um, like you were saying, mm -hmm. you like the having the little piece of meat right there um, on the back of it to kind of stop it just as an extra kind of safety precaution, if yeah. you will. Um, me being used to having this handle right here where my webbing goes into just like that. What I do whenever I shoot um, slings like this and only the ones that have the band anchored toward the middle of the sling, I do not do it with these where the bands are anchored at the back of the sling because it's not really possible. But anyways, I actually, like you said, have the ha same hand placement right here and I actually take the band and put it over over the webbing in between my index finger and my thumb to kind of give me that extra. Um, like locks it yeah, in. Yeah, like locks it in in a way, and it kind of gives me the same feeling as Interesting. that. Interesting. I've never tried that, actually. Yeah, I've never, yeah. seen, uh, never seen them do that. We'll see how that works. I mean, it feels fine. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Teach me stuff, Peach. <laughs> um, all right, guys. So. Ton of different sling options, ton of different really cool things to learn about. If you guys do have questions about which sling is right for you or why should I use this versus that or how else do I use this versus that, leave us a comment down in the comment section below. Uh, if you guys did find value in this content, we would love to see a like on this video. And if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to our channel. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you guys did find value in this video, please make sure you share this video with your friends and of course subscribe. We'd love to uh, hear what you guys have to say if you guys wanna leave a comment in our comment section below. Also, check this video out. It's one of my favorites.